How much will that be, Mr. Adams? There are a few more things I'd like to know before we discuss my fee. You say you haven't seen your father in three years? He left Indian Falls about three months after the trial. Trial? What trial? He was tried for murder. Well, who is he accused of murdering? My mother. He was acquitted, but... Well, Indian Falls is a small town, and most people there didn't think he was really innocent. They still don't. Is that why he left? Well, what makes you think he's in this area? I received a birthday present from him a couple of weeks ago. There wasn't a return address on it, but it was mailed from San Diego. But the first time you've heard from him? I've always got birthday and Christmas presents from him, and sometimes he's even sent me a postcard. Did they come from San Diego? Sometimes, sometimes not. Do you have a photograph of your father? Yes. I brought the last present and all the postcards, too. They're at the hotel. I thought they might help. Well, they might. I'll drive you over there. We'll take a look. On the way to the hotel, Cassie told me a little more about herself. Since her father's disappearance, she had lived with an aunt and uncle, her mother's sister and her husband. On her 18th birthday, she had received $1,500 from her mother's small estate, and she was determined to use any or all of it to find her father. Cassie gave me the photograph of her father, the postcard she'd received over the years, as well as the present she'd been sent on her last birthday. Although the present had been mailed in San Diego, it had been purchased in a jewelry store in the town of Del Mar. The location of the jewelry store and the postmarks on the cards gave me an idea. Do you know if your father ever had anything to do with horse racing? No. Why? Oh, it's just a hunch I have. I'd like to play through. It's not even worth explaining. If it pays off, you'll know about it. If it doesn't, you know that too. May I take this? Yes. And I'll let you know. The town of Del Mar is about 20 miles north of San Diego on Highway 101. It's the home of the Del Mar racetrack. It was a week before the annual summer meeting opened at the track, but I knew a number of racing stables had already moved their horses into Del Mar. Finding Charles McGill was a little more difficult than looking up a name in a phone directory, but not much. The first man to whom I showed McGill's photograph recognized him, not as Charles McGill, but as Charles Gillis, who was employed as a groom by one of the large stables. You're looking for the boss. He's down at the lunchroom. My name's Adams. I'm looking for Charles McGill. Let's not waste a lot of time telling lies, eh? What do you want with me? I have a message for you from your daughter. Cassie? She wants to see you. She's here? The El Cortez Hotel in San Diego. How did you find me? Well, you haven't been hiding very hard. All those cards and presents you sent, Cassie, followed a pattern. They were all mailed from the same place at the same time of the year. Los Angeles, then San Francisco, then Los Angeles, then here. They coincided with the racing dates at Santa Anita, Tanferan, Hollywood Park, Del Mar. You must follow the horses pretty closely, Mr. Adams. Well, I make an occasional contribution. And what does Cassie want? To see you. <sighs> Why? You're her father. Isn't that reason enough? She told you what happened, didn't she? Yes. Mr. Adams, have you ever been accused of murder? Well, not lately. Well, avoid it if you can. It's something you never get over. You think you can. You think because a jury says you're not guilty, that's that. But it isn't. You see, a jury's only 12 people, and there's no law that says anybody has to agree with them. Are you saying Cassie doesn't agree? I don't know whether she does or doesn't. But for three years, she's lived in a town that's convinced I killed her mother. So how could she help but wonder? Mr. Adams, if Cassie doesn't know where I am, don't tell her. Believe me, it'll be better that way. For you or for Cassie? For both of us. I'm happy here doing what I'm doing. Nobody knows who I am or what I am or why I'm here. All right, that's your side of the story. Now, what about Cassie's? I left her in good hands. My wife's sister loves Cassie as if she were her own. And Cassie's got to understand that you can't 
Take the pieces of your life after three years and put them together like you would a jigsaw puzzle. It can't be done. You'd probably be disappointed if it could. What do you mean by that? Just this. I think you're having a good time feeling sorry for yourself. So some people say you killed your wife in spite of what the jury said. Is that any reason to run away and hide in a stable? You think it was easy for me to give up my home, leave I Cassie? think it was easier for you to run away than stay or you wouldn't be here. If Cassie has any doubts in her mind about you, McGill, you help put them there. Now, if she comes looking for you, hoping to get rid of some of those doubts, you owe it to her to meet her at least halfway. You take it from there. What are you going to tell her? I'm going to tell her to wait in her hotel room until 8 o'clock tonight. If you don't show up, I'm going to tell her to forget you and go home. It's 8 o'clock. Five after, according to my watch. And you still won't tell me where he is? If he doesn't want to see you, why do you want to see him? He's my father. Well, that may have been reason enough to begin with, but there's more to it than that now. You... Hello, Cassie. My, you've grown up, Cassie. You're almost the image of your mother when she and I were married. Yes. And now she's dead. And you killed her. Kathy, put that down. You stay out of this, Mr. Adams. Well, this is why you wanted to find me. I've thought about this for a long time. Are you going to put that gun down, or do I have to take it away from you? Don't. Kathy, I didn't kill your mother. You did. Everybody knows you did. Listen to me, Kathy. I don't care what happens to me. But if you kill me, you'll be ruining the rest of your life. That isn't true. Operator, get a doctor up here right away. And then get me the police. Charles McGill was taken to a hospital. Fortunately, the slug had just grazed his head. His condition wasn't critical. Cassie, however, was placed under arrest on the charge of assault with intent to kill. It was three in the morning in Indian Falls, Wisconsin, when I placed a call to Cassie's aunt and uncle, Mildred and Frank Briggs. I spoke to the uncle. When I told him what had happened, Briggs said he and his wife would leave immediately for San Diego. Before leaving Chicago, Briggs wired me the time of his arrival. I was at the airport to meet the plane. Oh, hello. Dan Adam. How's Cassie? Well, I haven't seen her since last night. Well, uh, where's she being held and when can I see her? She's in the city jail. I guess you can see her anytime you want to. Oh, we'll go now. Oh, Frank, I'm terribly tired. Would it be all right if I went to the hotel? Oh, I suppose so. Maybe Mr. Adams will drive you there. Yes, of course. Uh, by the way, Mr. Briggs, I just talked to the hospital. I assumed you'd be interested in McGill's condition. Well? He'll be released this afternoon. Well, I suppose we should be thankful, for Cassie's sake, anyway. Offhand, I'd say that Mr. Briggs isn't one of those that agreed with the jury at Charles McGill's trial. How about you? Here are the checks to our luggage. Mr. Adams, Harriet was my sister. That's not much of an answer. Shall we go, Mr. Adams? On the way to the hotel, I tried to get some information from Mildred Briggs about her sister's murder and about Charles McGill's trial. It was about as rewarding as driving a railroad spike with a rubber mallet. Mr. Adams, I don't want to talk about it. It's all over and done with. Is it? What do you mean? What Cassie did seems to indicate that it isn't. Mrs. Briggs, why are so many people convinced that McGill killed your sister? Mr. Adams, I told you I don't want to talk about it. 
Well, I know that it's hard for you to talk about it, but... You don't know. No one knows. It was horrible. I just want to forget it. I have to forget it. Were there any witnesses to your sister's murder, Mrs. Briggs? No. Why? After leaving Mildred Briggs at the hotel, I checked in with my answering service. There was a message from Charles McGill at the hospital asking to see me. McGill was ready to leave the hospital and return to Del Mar. He wanted to talk about Cassie. He'd already told the police he would not sign a complaint against her. That meant it was just a matter of time before she would be released. But now he wasn't going to leave it at that. He wanted to retain me to go to Indian Falls and have the investigation of his wife's murder reopened. I can pay you, Adams. Three years is a long time, Mr. McGill. I doubt if there's anything anyone could do now. Well, maybe not, but, but please try. I don't really care who killed Harriet. I guess I never did, or I'd have done something about it before this. You just want to prove to Cassie that she's been wrong. For her own good. After all, she is my daughter. And I don't want to see her go through the rest of her life with, with all that hate inside her. I still don't know why everyone thinks you should have been convicted of the murder of your wife. Well, I'm not sure myself. Except that Harriet and I weren't a very devoted couple. And we did a lot of our battling in public. What about? Other men, mostly. Harriet was a very beautiful and a very restless woman. She'd go out with some man. Oh, I guess it was harmless enough, I don't know. But I'd go after her, mostly for Cassie's sake. And there'd be a big row. Now tell me about the murder. Well, there isn't much to tell. Harriet and I had a hot argument just a couple of hours before she was found dead. Frank and Mildred, they lived next door. They heard us. They said I, I threatened Harriet. Well, if they, they said so, I, I probably did. I don't remember. All I'm sure of is that I didn't mean it. So after the battle, I, I went storming out of the house. I got in the car, I drove around for about an hour just to, just to clear my head. When I got back home, I found Harriet lying on the living room floor. She was dead. She'd been strangled. Have you any idea who'd want to murder your wife or why? I didn't really know my wife for three or four years before she died. Adams, all I want is to convince Cassie that she can only hurt herself by aiding me. Will you help me? I told him I'd think about it. What I didn't tell him was that I thought the answer to the problem, if there was an answer, was here in San Diego and not in Indian Falls. Here? No. Cassie's being released. Frank's gone to get her. Oh, do you mind if I wait? Well, it may be quite a while before he gets back. Well, I have lots of time. Besides, I'm being paid. Paid? By whom? Charles McGill, to find out who killed your sister. But why would he do that? The jury's already... There's a difference between acquittal and vindication, Mrs. Briggs. Vindication is what McGill wants now, and that's what I'm going to give him. How? There's only one way to find out who killed your sister. I thought you and your husband could help. Well, I... I'm sorry, but we can't. You and your husband lived next door to McGill and your sister. The night Harriet was killed, she had an argument with McGill. You heard him threaten her. Is that all you heard? You didn't hear or see anything else. Coming in from the airport, you said there was something horrible, so horrible you had to forget it. What is it? <laughs> I'm sure it's more than just the fact that your sister was killed. I think you saw something or heard something that night. No. No, I didn't. What are you afraid of, Mrs. Briggs? Nothing. Yes, you are. What are you hiding? Who are you protecting? No one. 
Why did you try to poison Cassie's mind against her father? I didn't. I love Cassie. Well, then it was your husband. Why did he do it? What did he have to gain? Why did he turn Cassie against her own father and try to destroy her life, too? Mr. Adams, I've been living with that on my conscience for three years. Charles was a good father. He loved Cassie so. If Charles had been convicted, I would have... You would have what? What did you hold back at the trial? After Harriet and Charles's argument, Frank went over to see her. He insisted on going alone. I followed him. I could see Harriet and Frank from the terrace. He was telling her how much he loved her, how much he wanted her. She was laughing at him, telling him what a fool he was. I think she would have anything to do with him. Go on. Harriet started from the room. The Frank grabbed her. And, and then? I, I don't know. I ran home. And just kept quiet. You didn't say anything. I wasn't sure. I'm still not sure. You're sure. Aunt Mildred, Aunt Mildred, what happened? What happened? Why are you crying? What have you done to her? It's all right, Cassie. It's all right. Where's Uncle Frank? Let me off downstairs. He said he was going out to Del Mar. Del Mar? Why? To see your father? Aunt Mildred, what is Call Harborview matter? Hospital right now. Find out if your father's left. If he hasn't, you tell him he's not to leave. You're coming with me. Oh, yes, yes. What is this? What's going Make on? Make that call. Give me Harborview Hospital, please. waiting on McGill. Yes, I know. I wanted to. Oh, I know what you wanted, Briggs. Oh. It's all over. Your wife couldn't keep the secret any longer. Secret? What secret? What happened the night Harriet McGill was killed? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, there's no use pretending, Briggs. Your wife told me that you killed Harriet. What? Uh, you've been after Harriet for years, even before she was married to Charles. The night she had that fight with McGill, you went over to the McGill house. Mildred didn't tell you any such thing. How do you think I know all that? How do you think I know that when Harriet threatened to tell Mildred McGill what you'd said and done, that you grabbed her? I don't have to stay here and listen to this. Well, the thought of being rejected by Harriet was bad enough. But the threat of exposure, of everyone finding out what a fool you'd made of yourself, that was too much, wasn't it? And you couldn't just kill Harriet. You had to destroy everything and everybody connected with her. That's why you spent three years brainwashing Cassie, trying to get her to do just what she tried to do, find her father and kill him. You're out of your mind. And when she didn't do it, you came out here to do the job yourself. I don't know why you're so interested in making a murderer out of me, Adams, but it won't work. You can't prove one single word of this nonsense you've been talking. It's not nonsense, and your wife can prove it. Believe me, Adams, she won't want to. Oh, Mildred dreams of being free and independent, strong and decisive, and doing what's right regardless of the consequences. But when the chips are down, it comes time to decide. She just can't decide. So she just goes on being, well, Mildred, I guess. So long, Adam. Not so fast, Briggs. I took that into consideration. You took what into consideration? The influence you have over your wife. Any woman who's lived with what she has and hasn't talked can be made to change her mind very easily. That's why I had her give me this. 
What's that? It's a statement in her handwriting of everything she saw and heard the night you killed Harriet. Let me see that. When I have some copies made, you'll get one. I think you're bluffing, Adam. <laughs> Briggs was right. I was bluffing. I'd hoped to smoke him out before he could get to Mildred because I was certain he could force her to crawl back into her shell. He won't forgive me. Well, he already has. How do you know? Well, I don't know, but I've heard that that's the way fathers are. <laughs> 